What's going on, Safe Moon Army, Safe Moon family? Thanks again for joining me for yet another video. If you are new here or have not subscribed, subscribe, smash that like button, share this with all your friends. Just so you know, I am not a financial advisor. Anything you hear or see in this video is not financial advice. On today's show, we're going to be talking about the Gambia election response from John Caroni, the V2 contract on the BSC scan, and AI on the blockchain. So strap in, because here we go. Okay, we're starting right here. Adama Barro re-elected to Gambia as president. Now, I wanted to see what John Caroni thought of all that, and I asked him on Discord this morning. I said, are you happy Adama Barro won the election? He wrote, I'm politically agnostic, which is actually the best response possible. I actually forgot when asking this question to John Caroni, this was a political statement. And this is the answer of a true leader. So thank you so much, John, for this answer. I respect you so much more now and SafeMoon. And that's just something I wanted to bring up so everyone was aware of. Now let's fly on over to this. What exactly is this? Well, this is the Safe Moon version 2 contract address on BSC Scan. Now, if you scroll down here, you can see there's an update to the burn wallet address. You can see there's a set migration address, the set Safe Moon V2 address. There's an upgrading call down here. This is pretty interesting stuff. So if people are telling you that V2 isn't a thing, you can see it was tested just over four hours ago. So this is a real thing, guys. Please do not go to this address and interact with it, guys. You will lose money if you send it here. Just let it be for right now, but I just wanted to show you all this stuff that it is on its way getting set up. And if you fly on over to Twitter, this is Don Bailey. He's a good friend of mine. We talk a lot on Twitter. He posted this right here, and you can see that this is the new wallet address for V2 for the main wallet. And you can see here's the burn wallet address. So this is all really exciting stuff. V2 is imminent, guys. It's on its way. Be excited. Now let's fly on over to this. AI-enabled blockchain technology for driving sustainability and pollution control deployment in country. And if you scroll down here, you can read B it B manufacturing logistics, supply chain, agricultural or dairy exports. Each organization operates a fleet of vehicles for their day to day activities for their business needs, driving inefficiency out of their business at every given opportunity in order to be part of the go green initiative is a challenge. This is true for many business lines based on construction, mining, manufacturing, logistics, etc. as massive vehicle movement will cause excessive fuel consumption and complexities. This newly introduced blockchain technology is designed to fight such critical challenges and designed to improve a product's traceability as it moves through various stages in the supply chain and optimize energy. It can even be used to verify the authenticity of a product, especially those that are claiming to be ethnically sourced. So this is a really good thing about AI on a blockchain. Now let's fly over to this, how AI and blockchain are driving the energy transition. And if you scroll down here, you could read this. IBM says that by using a neural network trained on widely available weather forecasts and historical turbine data, DeepMind is now able to predict the wind power output 36 hours ahead of the actual generation. Consequently, this has boosted the value of Google's wind energy by roughly 20%. So this is a really important thing, having AI on a blockchain. And if you look at this diagram right here, you can see machine learning can increase the value of wind energy. And if you read down here, wind farm using machine learning, you can see the gradual increase of a 20% upgrade in economic value. So this would be a huge asset having AI on the blockchain for Safe Moon. Now let's jump on over to this. Papa posted this on September 23rd of 2021, and these are the Dell EMC servers. Now, if you go over here, you could see the top of the servers. I got this photo from RJ's YouTube channel. The link to that video is in the description below. Now, if you zoom in on this photo, you could see it says Dell EMC Power Edge, the R6525. Now, what exactly is that? If you go over to the Dell, the Power Edge R6525 is a rack server. Well, what exactly is on a Power Edge server? If you go over to this article from Blocks and Files, Dell is building AI ops compatibility so IT infrastructure can look after itself. If you read down here, it says Dell has announced Cloud IQ support for its Power Edge servers, which Papa posted a photo of, and the Power Switch networking gear, meaning that Cloud IQ predictive analytics covers Dell's IT infrastructure product range, providing level three conditional automation AI ops. Cloud IQ is an AI and machine learning based cloud service monitoring and predictive analytics application available as a SaaS offering for Dell's IT infrastructure, servers, storage, network, etc. Products in Dell's product range are fitted with sensors which send state and activity information to Cloud IQ. The software then analyzes the patterns and trillions of data points to check if a customer's infrastructure components are working optimally and whether they are running out of any resource. Well, if we scroll down here, I wanted to show you this chart. It says a fully autonomous system would use AI ops to look after itself, but that 
that desired end state will be reached via steps on a pathway. Dell defines five steps. I just want to look at this last step down here, level five, full autonomy. Systems automatically take action to align with organizational values. Automatic alignment with these values is expected with or without human input. System can handle all operations without exception. So this is something that's super cool if SafeMoon is getting into AI on their blockchain because it can go into something like this. Now let's fly over here. Decentralized versus centralized apps. What's best for your business? I want to read down here. It says blockchain technology is the foundation of decentralized apps or dApps. Therefore, a discussion about dApps cannot be complete without mentioning the blockchain. dApp is an application that relies on a shared database maintained by numerous computers rather than a single location. The decentralized app saw the green light in 2017 when Bitcoin became more noticeable. With over 2,000 dApps already available and in use, dApps are quickly gaining traction. Now, if we scroll down here and we read this, how do decentralized apps work? To use the decentralized apps, instead of downloading the application, the user has to pay a certain amount in terms of cryptocurrency to the developer. The user can also download the source code of the application under a smart contract and a collection of code, logic, and data to run the application. Unlike centralized apps, the backend code of the decentralized application runs on the peer-to-peer -peer network instead of the centralized servers. Now, how is this super important? Well, I wanted to say that if there's AI on the blockchain, then you could probably be doing something like this. It says how blockchain will revolutionize future cars. And if you read down here, the key takeaways, in order for autonomous cars to enter mainstream, they must continue to improve their availability to collect and communicate data from their surrounding environment. To maintain safety, driverless cars must consistently be aware of conditions on the road, their own condition, and the status of other cars. Using blockchain's decentralized ledgers, driverless cars could have access to the key traffic data almost simultaneously and more accurately. Enabled by blockchain technology, smart contracts could simplify many aspects of driving, such as paying for car insurance, repairs, and tolls. Now I wanted to fly over to this diagram. Here are four cars at an intersection. Now which car would go first? If they had to contact a centralized server, they would all have to do so, and it would take a long time for them to figure out who has the right of way. If they were using a decentralized app on an AI blockchain, they can all talk to each other peer to peer and automatically figure out how to get through this intersection collectively without slowing down so they don't collide. And if SafeMoon is actually using AI on their blockchain due to those photos that Papa sent us, they could be driving sustainability, driving the energy transition with it, and also driving around autonomous cars. This is huge news, guys, and that's all I got. And if you're not subscribed, you should be. Smash that like button. Share this with all your friends, and I'll see you in the next video.